You know, people will get mad at me because I, like, I get on knives for self-defense. You do? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, right, tell that to Craig Douglas. He's the expert on knives. Let me explain why I get on knives for self-defense. The reason is because the barrier for entry to training is huge. Like, if you can't wrestle, you're not going to be able to use a knife. They're hard to use. They're unreliable. And if you can't wrestle, you're not going to be able to do anything with them. And everyone tells me that I don't know and I should ask Craig Douglas. But that is... Oh, shit. <laughs> You have no idea what you're talking about. I, I don't. My... Go! So, Craig, explain to me how wrong I am about knives, because you are a proponent and expert industry standard for knife as a defensive tool. Explain to me how wrong I am about everything that I say Man, about knives. I, I honestly, I don't think you're, you're wrong about anything. I think you hit uh, so much on the head. It was interesting um, doing the course this weekend that you were in, you and Nate came and, and trained, and you're like, dude, you're saying everything I've been saying. And Is it just because I'm more annoying? I, like, I just got more of, abrasive? Because like, you're kind of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Uh. So I had the opportunity to attend the Edge Weapons Overview. Two-day seminar, 16 hours, taught by South Narc himself, Mr. Shivworks, Craig Douglas. Now, I'm going to be reviewing the seminar, talk about his training and whether or not I recommend it. Spoiler alert. I do, because not only was it the best edged weapons training I've ever received in my life, the best knife work training I've ever received in my life, it was the best grappling class I've ever had in my life. I've never been to a seminar where the instructor delivered as much information in as efficient a way as possible. There were people who had never grappled before, ever, any kind of wrestling or combatives at all, but by the end of the weekend, you could not tell. Craig has mastered teaching wrestling to non-wrestlers, which uh, let's go ahead and knock this all out of the way because wrestling is the base. The base of wrestling. We have built an operating system based on pressure, posture, and position. Hey, Good. Nice. Good job using the rest of the shut down the punches. Nice, Mike. Very well done. Good composure, good control. There we go. Nice job. Right! Good job, man. Not only are you getting all the actual, you know, content, like how to a dude, but also all the pre-fight stuff, all the you know disarming people with your words, setting up reactionary gaps, all the soft skills that aren't as like sexy or cool as you know like stabbing motherfuckers. As for the, the training, what I'm gonna show, I'm not gonna show too much of his content, obviously. You have to pay for it and it's worth it. Uh, book a seminar with him now, but I'm gonna show you the complete sort of the culmination, this big two-on-one knife fight between me and two other dudes, uh, the live exercise that sort of like is a test of what we've learned so far. And I learned a lot. One of the things I learned from this is that I'm not crazy about my gear. This knife I have, it doesn't exist anymore, so there's no link. This knife has been with me a lot of places and it served me well. It's cut a lot of boxes. I don't think I've ever cut a person with this one. But it's a great yeah, duty knife, also a concealed carry knife. Like it's, a, it's really cool, but I'm not in love with the handle. And I learned that in this course because the handle doesn't do exactly what I needed to do to use the knife in the way that we learned in this course. So I got this custom jammy for Bushkill Blades. That thing looks so good. Uh, it, I'll put a link to Bushkill Blades down below. He hand makes these. These are, these are custom knives. So if you have one, that means you're super cool. And this is closer to what I want. This is more like what I need, but I'm also still open to suggestions. So if you have a knife, just tell me what it is down in the comments below, like a knife that you recommend for this, like a real combat self-defense 
duty style knife. Just tell me what the knife is though. Sometimes if you post links, YouTube won't like actually show your comment. One big issue that we ran into with such a room full of badasses, everyone had kind of had their own idea of what they would do. And it all kind of went to shit when they were pressured. Cause I took Nate to this thing with me and I don't even think Nate gets how cool it is that he got to go. Like I don't even think he appreciates what it was, but he actually did a training exercise with Eli Knight and this other, the other biggest, strongest guy in the room. And you know, you find out that his instincts, his instinct was as soon as it said go to take the guy to the ground. Well, you just took Eli fucking Knight to the ground. Like you're not getting out of that guard. And now you've got this big, humongous, massive human punching you in the head. Craig's number one and number two rules are to stay conscious and stay standing. But you see that our instincts sometimes take over and these things have to be trained out of us, just as they were trained into us. You'll see in mine later, I, I get sort of hung up on using the knife and I, I stop defending the takedowns like I'm supposed to because I'm just like hung up on the idea of like that this is gonna be the solution to my problems. And I'm just gonna let it play and then we'll break it down after. All right, Mike, you're the good guy. <clears throat> Butcher, you're the bad guy Mike. Riley, you're the puncher. Mike, you have five seconds, five seconds from the time I say go to solve that punch problem. You punch him, get caught and tangled, keep him from drawing a knife, get your blade out and use it to get loose and keep loose from punching. And Riley's coming in, windmill. Ready. Now the guys that I'm going against are both pretty seasoned and experienced martial artists. They both know what they're doing. In fact, this guy Bunchy that hip tosses me, he'd been trying to hip toss me all weekend and he's a much better grappler than me, but I think I was a little bit bigger and stronger and I was for the most part able to stop him from using this specific move on me at other points in the weekend. But once we have the stress of this live exercise, dudes throw me all over the place. Now my goal was to try to manipulate them to keep them snacked up in front of each other. And that, that sounds simple. That sounds like just, oh, just line them up. Just line them up. And then they both can't attack you at the same time. And I was trying, I was trying. But it's not that simple when there's at least some stakes. And now we're wearing protective gear and we are buddies and we know each other and we train together. But there is some stress involved. It's hard to see and it's hard to hear. And there's people watching. Craig fucking Douglas is watching. And you know, I want to do a good job. But you find yourself getting taken down in scenarios where if that was one-on-one, -on -one, Bunchy could take me down, but not like that. He could get me on the ground, obviously, but not with that. But you add that other dude in there and suddenly shit gets a lot harder. Well, and like you, like you said, man, it's hard, right? That kind of That's training, why people don't want to do it. It's that hard. kind of training is hard. It's difficult. It's not, it's not ego affirming. And I am um, hurt. Every part of me hurts. <laughs> I will definitely be attending more seminars by Craig. It was easily one of the best training experiences of my life. If you take your self-defense seriously and you take the use of weapons in self-defense seriously, it's almost like required that you go to one of these. You know, if, if uh, the messages is the same, but people listen to me and they don't listen to you, it, it may be it's, like, it's, it's an me? icy mic thing. It's, it must be me. <laughs>